Hi and welcome to another election special hot seat. I'm Aving from the Belfast Wimps crew and we're on board the Lord Rank today. Hi, I'm Adam McGibbon. I'm the Green Party candidate for South Belfast and one of the youngest people standing in this election. Hey, thanks for coming today. My pleasure. Um, the slogan for the Green Party manifesto is fair is worth fighting for. Um, how do you plan to make a fairer Northern Ireland and a fairer UK? Well, we think it's a damning indictment of Labour that after 13 years in power, the whole of the UK is actually an even more unequal place than it's ever been over the last 30 or 40 years. So our whole idea of fur is worth fighting for. It's about stuff like creating a high pay commission so that uh, bankers can't get their hands on massive bonuses. It's about stuff like creating 38,000 new jobs in Northern Ireland and renewable energy to help out people who really need it at the minute. I mean, for example, we're in the docks right now in Northern Ireland we have a history of heavy industry and manufacturing, we should be using that to create renewable energy in Northern Ireland to help bring people jobs in the construction sector that really need it right now. Um, God, it's a really long question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have launched, sorry, we have launched our own manifesto outlining the things that are important for young people in Northern Ireland. One of the key topics in our manifesto is actually environment, and the Green Party are seen as the champions in environmental issues and policies. How did the Green Party help save the environment? Well, the whole idea of green politics, one of the core tenets of it is the whole idea of sustainable development, and that's putting the environment on the same plane as social issues and economic issues. And we kind of think right now the environment's at the bottom of the, that kind of pillar, but we like to have it on the same kind of level, because at the end of the day, the environment is a subsidiary of social life and economic life, and if the parent company collapses, then everything just goes. So we think that there should be equal consideration to all three and that's how that's the kind of ethos we like to bring to all kind of areas of government so that's how we'd save the environment. Okay. Northern Ireland has one of the most important marine conservation areas in the world in strength for luck. What is your commitment to protecting our marine environment? Well green politics is a holistic philosophy and we think that you have to look after places like rivers and uh, important conservation areas because that will have a knock-on effect and everything else like the water you drink so that's certainly a high priority for us and animal welfare is another big concern of ours so we place a pretty high priority and a high commitment on looking after those kind of areas. One of the key criticisms levelled against the Green Party is that the party is solely focused on environmental issues. How do you respond to this? I think that's lazy stereotyping. I think in the past um, that certainly would have been an easy hit for us to take really, but I think since then we've kind of professionalised a wee bit. We're talking about economics and the whole idea of our manifesto in this election is the idea of the Green New Deal. You could argue it's more focused on economics than environmentalism, but obviously there's that pillar in there as well. So I think if anybody has a read at our manifesto and they see we have policies on all walks of life, that uh, they can't really say that anymore. With this in mind, we'd like to explore your position on other issues. Another key area from our manifesto is health. Do you believe enough is being done to provide adequate health care access for young people? I think not enough is being done to make people aware of the benefits they can actually get. For example, dental charges. I don't know if you ever filled out the form, but when I was a teenager, they make it almost impossible for you to get the benefits. You have to provide all these different types of ID, all these different certificates. And I think if more awareness was made of how easy it is to get these, and if they made it a little bit simpler to get it, rather than making it you know, a hoopla to get around to get the forms, I think that would be a lot better. 10% of children and young people in the UK have a clinically recognised mental disorder. Uh, well, what will you do to improve the mental health services for young people? I think the first thing that needs to be done is to remove the stigma of mental health. I think a lot of people won't go and get help because they think there's something wrong with them. But at the end of the day, this is something that we shouldn't be afraid of addressing all as a society. So I think the first thing that needs to be done is just to address that stigma and to make people aware of where they can get help and that there's nothing wrong with going to get help. Our third topic area is democracy. What role do you believe young people have to play in the political processes of Northern Ireland and in the UK? Young people have a massive part to play. At the end of the day, I think a lot of people are turned off by politics, but it's not politics they're actually turned off by, it's the politicians. People are really engaged by the process, they're really engaged by the issues. It's just about getting them involved and potentially they can have a huge sway. I'm the Vice President of the Students' Union at Queen's at the minute, and one of the things we'd like to do is register a huge amount of students to vote. If we could get, say, 3,000 students registered in the one place where they all live, they could potentially sway an election, and that would get all the different political parties talking about student issues. So all it takes is for people to get a wee bit involved and register to vote and stuff like that. There's a lot of power that young people and students could have if they just harness it. Do you support lowering the voting age to 16? Absolutely. I think that if you can go away and fight and die for your country, pay taxes, all the rest, you should be able to vote for the government of the country. So, unequivocally, we have no problems saying that we want the voting needs to be reduced to 16. 
Our fourth area is education, employment and training. The unemployment rate for 18 to 24 year olds is double the national average. What do you believe should be done to address this issue? I think more funding needs to be given for apprenticeships and the like because at the end of the day if someone's going to be unemployed at 18 to 24 they're more likely to be unemployed later in life so you need to nip the problem in the bud quite early on. And part of the whole idea of the Green New Deal, if that was implemented, it would give a lot of people manufacturing internships and stuff like that to get them involved early on. What will you do to help increase access to training and apprenticeships for young people? Well, as I said, the whole idea of the Green New Deal would create so many more jobs in Northern Ireland, it would revitalise the economy, and I think that would help get a lot of people off the dual queues. Enrolment in higher education has increased by 16% in the last 10 years. What will you do to ensure young people in Northern Ireland have access to higher education? Well, in the short term, the Green Party is totally opposed to any increase in the amount of fees that students have to pay. It's currently something like 3600 a year. Mm -hmm. Now, in the long term, we'd like to see fees totally abolished or replaced with a more progressive system. The National Union of Students has something called the graduate tax, and the whole idea is you pay after you leave university and you pay a very small percentage of what you earn. And that's more progressive when you think about it, because if, if you're making more money, you've done better at university, mm -hmm. you should be able to contribute more. So we like to see a different form of funding so that everybody can go to university and we don't have the situation now where people are leaving after doing their undergraduate degree with 18 grand worth of debt. Our final topic is international affairs. What is your commitment to upholding the international rights of the child? Well, the first thing we'd like to do is make people more aware that there actually is a UN charter on the rights of the child that should be used as a benchmark for anything involving children in society. We should use that as a guideline for doing anything like that. On a more local level, the Greens would like to see a 20 mile an hour speed limit in residential areas. Now, the National Council for Accidents says that if you get hit at 20 miles an hour, there's a 97% of you surviving. But if you get hit at 30 miles an hour, there's a 50% chance of you surviving. So we'd like to see a 20 mile an hour speed limit so that the parents will have the confidence that their kids out in the street to play. And that's better for their physical health, it's better for their mental health, it's better for all sorts of reasons. Well, thank you, Adam. Thanks and uh, this has been another election special.